This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. Six oh one PM. I'd like to call to order the July eighth of East Hampton Conservation Commission. This this meeting of the East Hampton Conservation Commission will be conducted in person and remotely online to the greatest extent possible. Should an interruption occur, in which the online meeting ends abruptly, both the in person and the online meeting will, will not be restarted. All agenda items will be automatically carried to next meeting. <laughs> yep, and then um, just. For some notes for folks who are attending online, um, the next meeting is scheduled for, for July 22nd. So if there are any is technical issues, that's some things will be continued to. Um, if you want to participate, you need to use the raise hand function to let me know. Um, otherwise, if you're here for an item, I'll make you a co-host when the time comes. Uh, and then you can also use the chat to let me know that you want to make a comment at any time. Uh, the raise hand function is along the bottom there. And the pick icon that looks like a little hand. And then please state your name for the record at the beginning of any comments. And then typically comments are allowed for five minutes for comment at the discretion of the chair. And then please don't use the chat function to um, make comments. It's not private. It all is generated in just transcript at the end of the meeting. And um, you can use it though to communicate to me that you have technical issues or um, that you wanna make a comment. All right, that's all I have. Are there any public concerns or non-agenda items tonight? Public concerns about non-agenda items. Well, any any non-agenda items. So something that uh, you want to talk about that's not on our agenda already. Are you actually covering everything that's on your agenda? Because you never we actually do. We'll go through what <laughs> what's was, on the list. <laughs> grab, grab an agenda if you want. It's on the list. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, go past something. Yeah. No. So I, I think then I'll just make a general comment. Um, I'm concerned about the tasty top request for a waiver of um conditions um to start pre-site work and i would hope that if the conservation commission has any um input in that that they would not they would hold the the developer to what they had already agreed on this developer has a history of um going back on his agreements and going oops and ending up in court with uh, abutters and cities so um i would ask that we hold them to everything that they've agreed to and perhaps even more given that we've sold our soul to allow that development um well that that's that's is an agenda item that we'll we'll be going through okay kip i can ask are you talking about uh like because they haven't asked for a waiver of any of the conservation commission, the order of conditions, can conditions as it were. Is this for the planning board in their special permit potentially that there were conditions waived or requesting to be waived? Yes, okay. and one of the conditions they were asking to be waived was the um, MEP um, approval, the finishing of the uh, of the NEPA process. Right. I see. Yeah. And they mm -hmm. wanted to start the work before that, which is problematic, I think. Um. And in general, I would. I think it was one of the order of conditions with us. So they had. I believe so. When I went and read it, they were able to confirm that the kind of the belt they've reached the last stage, as it were, and so they don't anticipate any major comments to come through that would end up with the commission wanting to make any changes. Um, is what they presented to the commission for that what stage they're at with that. But it's not yet approved. Well, I mean, NEPA doesn't approve or disapprove. Yeah, the they project. just submit comments. They make suggestions and then recommendations, but they can't actually hold somebody up. Nah. That's my understanding. So, but they can't get state permits until they can't get the state permit. Right. The right. Permit, right. So they can't push the DOT process either. Right. Yeah. 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 But you, we do have a condition about. I forget how it reads exactly, but they haven't asked us to waive anything. I yeah. don't think. Uh, not that I heard. Not that I heard. Yeah. No, I'll double check on it. But um, yeah, they definitely have entered the last phase and just know that they didn't anticipate any comments. So okay. we can double check on it. 
I guess we'll wait and see if stuff comes up on the agenda. The hearings really had one, but that's been continued to 826. Is there anything to discuss on that one? No. Right. Um, for certificates of compliance. Can you take item B? First? I sure can. What is it? <laughs> item B? 5B. Motion to take item 5B out of order. Is there a second? second. Uh, roll call. Um, Commissioner Butcher. Aye. Commissioner Carr. Aye. Commissioner August. Aye. Commissioner Weeks. Aye. My motion carries. Uh, we're taking 5B out of order. Okay, uh, I know Kendra is here for this item from um, WSP. I have this document and this document for that. Um, and Kendra, I've, I've given you the ability to turn your camera and unmute yourself. I don't know if, uh, if, if Kim is your, I know mean, you told me who it was going to be. If Kim is your colleague, I can make her a co host as well. I guess I think I'll be doing most of the presentation, but it'd be nice. Kim might have to talk, so it'd be nice if you could enable her to be able to, if needed. No problem. I've done so. Great. Should I begin? Can you all hear me? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm Kendra Sultzer, a biologist for WSP, and we are applying for this request for a certificate of compliance for a solar array at 232 Park Street in East Hampton. It was a 3,017.52 kilowatt DC ground mounted solo, solar voltaic energy system with two arrays, one array with 146 racks and one array with 364 racks. It was an approximately 11 acre development area, which had the construction of solar array panels and racking, maintenance vehicle access roads, electrical transformers mounted on concrete pads, underground electrical conduit and perimeter security fence, and six storm water infiltration basins were built around the two PV arrays and erosion and sediment controls were erected between the work areas and wetlands. Um, our project design minimized wetland impacts apart from the following. So there was the reconstruction of an access road within the bordering vegetated wetlands, land under water bodies and waterways of White Brook, which was a perennial stream and riverfront area, the reconstruction of an existing access path crossing the bordering vegetated wetlands, and the erection of solar PV arrays within a buffer zone of riverfront area. So originally the wetland impact mitigation efforts included the replication of bordering vegetated wetlands by two wetland replication areas, and the notice of intent was filed with the Conservation Commission under the Wetlands Protection Act in April of 2018. The order of conditions form was issued in November of 2018, and the amended order of conditions was issued in August 2020, which allowed the combination of those two wetland replication areas that I mentioned into a single wetland replication area along the border of the existing wetlands in between array one and array two. And that was because the wetlands, the wetland impacts were not as great as originally anticipated. So the wetland replication area was is 420 square feet, which corresponds with the actual area of wetland impact by the project, which ended up being 280 square feet times 1.5 as a safety factor. Um, and then the extension permit for the order of conditions um, was issued in May of 2020, which extended the order of conditions until November of 2024. The construction of the solar array was completed in June of 2020, and the wetland replication area construction was completed in November of 2020 and included the installation of woody shrubs such as winterberry, high bush blueberry, and red osier dogwood. And initial wetland seeding mix occurred in October of 2021. Um, and due to changes in personnel, we then were able to monitor in last year, November 2023 and June of 2024, um, and found that the wetland replication area 
met the performance criteria of vegetation per the order of conditions, which was the 75% of the surface of the wetland replication area was established with hydrophytic species. Um, and there's an operation and maintenance plan for the future, which includes mowing of the array and stormwater basins. So the grass will be mowed annually and the infiltration basins will be inspected at least once per year and after major storms. So we are now requesting a certificate of compliance. <laughs> <laughs> so this was from the site visit that was That's a right. recent site visit? Yeah, we did a site visit on, I don't know if I was there, And I can show those pictures on the screen. The site has been stabilized for a while now. I know I have pictures going back for that it's vegetated. There's no bare areas. Um, anymore except for the roadway which is expected to be gravel as it is and then um there's kind of a larger like turnaround space at the very end of the array um which is also gravelly but all the basins are vegetated um and so the focus was kind of looking at the basins making sure they're functioning they appear to be functioning oh yeah commissioner weeks was there um i didn't notice any standing water in any of the basins uh but one of the basins did have a good amount of like woody vegetation in it which i didn't know I know, Kendra, I don't know if you got a chance to talk to your team about that, if they were planning to leave those there or if they were planning to remove them. Um, and then uh, the other the other factor was for the wetland vocation area. It did appear to be um, fully vegetated with wetland plants. Uh, it wasn't dominated by invasives or anything like that. There are some invasives around the outside of it, but not in any like, vast quantity. Um, and it seems like the the dirty area was these wetland goldenrod, I believe, of the main species. But the woody plantings, sorry, what was the main goldenrod? I don't know. Oh. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Kendra. That, that's what I remember it being. Um, however, the woody plantings that were part of the original, or uh, the agreed upon in the amended order, uh, don't seem to really have survived. Is it the pool one, maybe, that they were able to find? Um, but the majority of the 21 woody plantings did not survive. Okay. Um, you know what they were? Yeah. Hold on a second. We did get the as built plans as is required. So maybe like uh, you know, red oak and cottonwood and things like that? I think it was. Black berry. There were, yeah, there was um, red osier dogwood, winterberry, and highbush blueberry. There were seven planted, and let's see, one of the dogwoods, five of the winterberry, and one of the highbush blueberries was seen on site. And let's see, seen to be, yeah, nice like healthy, healthy, not, yeah. Yeah, um, let's see. So that was the first report and the second report. Um, this was done in June 2024. There were only there were none of the badwoods were found, two of the winter berry um bushes were found, and none of the high bush blueberries were found. But the uh and it was 75% wetland species, plant species there. So I guess it's uh to the commission to decide like is that enough? Do you want them to redo the plantings? Do to get them out there again? Um, and then, yeah, Kendra, maybe I'll turn it back to you real quick just about the stormwater basin, um, the one that had the woody vegetation in it. If you have any uh, any word from the maintenance team. Yeah, is that, that covered in your maintenance plan? I would have to double check on that. We haven't received word from our maintenance team recently, but hoping to hear back from them soon about that. Um, I was also curious if there is an invasive species like management plan going 
forward because you said it was somewhere on the edges, Cassie, and I saw honeysuckle and some bittersweet and some Japanese barberry. So seems like if it wasn't managed, it would grow in. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think they've done much. I don't, and Kendra, you can correct me if wrong, but I don't know that there was, they did the plantings and then they've just been monitoring. I'm not sure what's been done in terms of invasive removal. Okay. And so, okay. um, was that part of the condition or not? I think that for the replication area, it just needs to be that it is not okay. dominated by invasives when it's 75%. Okay. Yeah. Um, wetland species to prove that it's functioning as a wetland. Um, yeah. For, you, you think that was the case? I'm yeah, it definitely was seventy five percent wetland, mostly that golden rod um, from sure. what I could see out there. Um, but again, the woody plantings that we should ask for the forest not right there. Um, so, or even two of them are. And then the. Uh, but every, even yeah. those plantings can survive. Everything looks stable from the photos, right? So. Yeah, certainly there's no unstable ground on that site in um, any location. I guess it's how we feel about when we do those plantings for if it's stable, not worry about it. I don't think I'm worried. Yeah. You know, if it's a if the replication was successful and then maybe the species community is a little different than you know what got planted, but uh, maybe it's just not conducive to those particular species. Uh -huh. I mean, I would assume some other woody species will grow in, like um sumac or something that's on its own so the so the woody species are growing in the basin but not no it's not the ones that they planted there just happen to be woody some type of woody plant species growing in one basin there's multiple basins throughout the site they're kind of like long um and only one of them appeared to have this woody this woody edge none of them were over like an inch thick they, they're still pretty small but um, that was just the only one that had that wood vegetation, which I know maybe they're planning to mow it down again soon. Mm -hmm. That's fine. It just typically which, which you don't want. would be in the maintenance plan for that basin, right? That is, yeah. That's what she confirmed, and it is in the maintenance plan okay. that was submitted for this regular mowing um, and maintenance of the basin. So they keep functioning. So there are a number of in perpetuity conditions that would continue to apply after uh the certificate of compliance was issued i'm just <laughs> looking at that right now yep let me get that up on my head mm -hmm. i want to get that the woody vegetation and the storm water basin under control right, right. right. that's part of the yeah, ongoing conditions yeah, that would be um, probably the operation maintenance right. plan. If it doesn't get maintained and it becomes wetland like, then it becomes a regulated area, not a. So, stormwater. So, the in perpetuity, perpetuity conditions include uh, state of the slope shall be maintained. As designed and constructed by the property owner of record, whether bioengineered or mechanically stabilized slopes, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and fertilizers should not be used within the 100 foot buffer zone. Organic pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and fertilizers may be used subject to review and approval of the commission. Shall be noted in the compliance. Native plant species, only native, non invasive plant species may be planted on site. Seed mixes shall also consist of 100% native, non invasive species. This shall be noted in the certificate of compliance. Dumping is prohibited. There should be no dumping of leaves, grass clipping, fresh or other debris into wetland resource areas or the 100 buffer zone. Shall survive the expiration of this order and is included uh, continuing condition in perpetuity on the strict compliance. Additional alteration prohibited. There should be no um, additional alteration of the area under Conservation Commission jurisdiction without the required review permits. Shall survive the expiration of the order, perpetuity with strict compliance. And then non native slash invasive. Plant species monitoring and management, continued monitoring and management of non-native and or invasive plant species on site to prevent the spread of non-native or invasive species within the project area, including but not limited to the stormwater basins. This condition shall survive the expiration of this order and continue condition of the certificate of compliance. 
Can you just read the beginning of the last condition? Yes, read right about invasive. Continued monitoring and management of non-native and or invasive plant species on site to prevent the spread of non-native uh, and or invasive plant species on site uh, area within the project area, excuse me, including but not limited to the stormwater basin. So that seems important to me because you're replicating what was a healthy wetland with a new wetland and there's tons of invasive species. And if you had a healthy wetland, mm -hmm. It might have had a better shot at fighting off invasive species, but since I didn't think that was in the original ordinary conditions, but since it is, and since there seemed to be some that are starting to go in, because I just want to know that that was going to be monitored. It sounded like the invasives noted were outside the limit of work, though. It seems like, yeah, that they're on the perimeter of the of the wet modification area. Yeah. And then uh -oh. the project area, like kind of, yeah, like not really, I don't know, Kendra, do you feel like they were, I can't remember, did, did you find any significant amount or any of them within the wetland replication area? Um, they certainly wasn't dominated by invasives. Yeah, there weren't really that many within, it was more on the perimeter or surrounding areas. But there is an in perpetuity condition that it will be continue to be included. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're yep. yeah. <clears throat> Monitored and managed. And managed. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't think we need those woody plantings to help keep the invasives at bay? Um, I don't know. I not sure anything keeps it basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, as long as it's filled in and grown with something, I think I think I have less concern that those woody plants didn't make it. As long as that uh, there's no open area that's uh, going to be at risk of you know something worse than what's there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think there's not anything in the um, O&M plan about invasives, but we could suggest that as part of the stormwater management plan. It seems like to me that in perpetuity condition, it would need to be in the O&M, wouldn't it? Yeah. Are we trying to close out the stormwater management plan tonight also? Um, I don't know that it has a stormwater permit okay. for this project. Yeah. Um, so it does. It's it does? A, yeah, okay, it does okay, good. Oh, sorry. It was on yeah. the original. I was looking yep. at the amended version because um, we didn't amend the stormwater permit. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, that typically we try to do them both at the same time. Sure, that's what I thought, but it, it, it didn't say it in the uh, agenda here that there was stormwater was listed. Mm -hmm. It's a big enough project to have one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do any of the commissioners have any other concerns about um, the certificate of compliance for the project itself? Any other concerns that anyone has? No, no I mean, I, I wonder if we should go like one more meeting and make sure that one is mowed and have the O&M manual updated and then issue it. Well, we, then we can wait to hear back from uh, her people and, and try to get that clarified. And that's certainly, uh, you know, nothing's going to change in two weeks here. Yeah. And Cassie, I believe when we were there at the site visit, they had mowed the area. Is that correct? Right. But we're talking about the basin that has the wooden plantings in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's pretty typical for those to be in there, in my opinion. I mean, I, uh, I think that's the main one, but yes, certainly they had been doing mowing generally on the site, seemed seemingly in compliance with the rest of it. All the other bases, none of the other bases said woody plants. I don't know why it was so pervasive in that one, um, because they've been mowing them, which seems like they have. Or could we yeah. just empower them to give that information to you, the updated on their plan and evidence of having mowed it and then and agree to issue this certificate of compliance. Since it's only a small percentage, I don't have a concern doing that because it is a small percentage of, of, of the whole project to, right. just to deal with the, the maintenance of that um, that area. We've done similar things in the past. So yeah, you can vote on them 
completing those tasks, mowing the woody basin, and what was the other one? Sorry, uh, getting the updated oh, operation and then, plan. Yeah. And basics, and yeah. then once they give those to you. How much longer do we have you, Cassie? <laughs> I have one, one more meeting. meeting. Yeah, I know. You or your. <laughs> Do you? No, I, yeah, I would just want to get like dropped, so maybe it would be better to do what you suggested initially and um, continue one more meeting and then okay. see if we can get those two things sorted out. Okay. Hmm? Is there anything in the stormwater management that uh, we need to discuss for the candidates so that we're ready for the next meeting? No, I don't, I don't think so. Was there, Cassie, was there anything else that did, did it look like they submitted everything uh, required by the order of stormwater submitted as far as you could tell? Yeah, as far as I could tell, it seemed to be um, looking good. Um, so I'm realizing we typically try to go out there with the uh, city engineer to look at the stormwater system. Okay. But I feel like I should go back in the files because I feel like we did that before. Um, okay, it's already been out there? No, we, it would have been with Dan, okay, in our, Dan okay. um, the previous city engineer. But uh, just to like say, like, yes, it looks, it looks all set. Because um, the big ones otherwise are the Asheville plans, which have been provided. Um, and I think if there's anything else, doing a site visit, making sure the wetland replication area reports have come in. And look satisfactory and meeting the criteria for that. We're for continuing to one more meeting. We can double check. Yeah. Yeah. Dan. Okay. Well, I just want to see if the picture is known from, uh, from the public that has any, I don't know who else is online here, if there's any concerns in the public or anything. Or questions. Yeah, use the raise hand function if you're online, but it sounds like we get someone here. Go for it. Um so two questions. Is there water on site for washing the panels? And and if not, how are the panels cleaned? Maybe a better question for Kendra. I don't know that there's any water on site for cleaning the panels. And my understanding is they typically need to be cleaned annually with water. Mm -hmm. Generally, the, the Conservation Commission is more concerned with the site maintenance in terms of the stormwater management on site and site stability in the wetland replication area. The functioning of this of the solar panels isn't necessarily the concern of the commission, but it, Kendra still might be able to answer that question. Yeah, that, that's something that we would not force them to comply to or anything like that, but let's see if there's an answer for you. Unless it affected the stormwater. Unless, exactly. Potentially, yeah. yeah. So one day washing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Some of these chemicals too or not. Yeah, I'm not sure. And I don't think that's part of the certificate of compliance. So I'm not sure. I don't have any information about that at this time. Okay. My other question is there a plan for recycling the glass for the solar panels? If they're damaged or when they're end of life, if they last about 15, 20 years tops. I also believe that's not a part of this, and I'm not sure I have any, any information on that at this time either. That certainly would not be under the. Yeah, that, that, we just don't have the authority. Yeah. Yeah. It's not an unreasonable question. It's not it's not not at all. Of it's but it's just, as yeah. far as what uh, the Conservation yeah. Commission has under its purview, that wouldn't fall under there. Is there a copy of the certificate of compliance anywhere? It's not online reviewed by the Conservation Commission. Okay. They haven't. Yeah. They're um, voting yeah. tonight whether or not to issue that. So it hasn't even been issued yet to pay. Right. And so where are they voting? No. Oh, it's actually said they're voting tonight. They decided to wait. They're going to continue their review to the next meeting. Okay. So there's no copy of it. Yeah, because it hasn't been. I, I haven't even written it yet. I have to oh, write it after they vote. Okay. After they vote, I'll write it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I think there are no further questions, and I guess I'd like to get a motion to continue um, 5D to uh, July 22nd at 6 p.m. 
Can you find me until 926? 22nd. 22nd, that's right. Is there a second? Second. Uh, roll call of Commissioner Buttrick? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Carr? Aye. Commissioner August? Aye. And Commissioner Weeks? Aye. Passes. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go back to regular order. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. All right, so this is a certificate of compliance for the pump house, um, Mass EP file 151302, which was the demolition activities on your lower mill ponds. And yeah. we finally got something from our city engineer that I'll propose this out, correct? Correct. So one of the things that conservation people are waiting on was to see if we could get something from the city in here kind of confirm that it was built in the way that we anticipated it to be built. Um, this is in lieu of the asphalt drawings that we typically request, only in that the grant funding has run out and the contractor is no longer tied to the project. Um, and so there wasn't really a way to get asphalt's in that in that way that we normally request and so we have the city engineer we requested the city engineer give their opinion uh, of the structure and it can read this if you guys want to if you're going to get a chance to read it um it says to whom may concern i am writing to you in regards to the pump house demolition and removal project on lower mill pond the order of conditions for this project, Mass Evening File Number 151-302, was signed in May 17, 2019. This letter is intended to update the Conservation Commission on the status of this project. Construction of this project started in July 2019 and was substantially complete in November 2019. Multiple city staff uh, was involved and oversaw the project. A progress and inspection report was submitted to the Commission outlining observations of work progress and site conditions during the course of the project. This reporting was done by other city staff but was reviewed by me as a presentation, as a preparation for this letter. As staff engineer at the time, I was aware of the project and made some site visits related to the project. The following letter is based on my limited involvement with the project at that time and review of the project file for the project. Overall, it is my understanding that the project was built according to plan. The only major change from the original five, uh, excuse me, April 5th, 2019 drawings was related to the water intake area. And originally contracted, uh, excuse me, the contract called for the water intake pit to be filled with flowable fill. After demolition of the existing structure uh, to be demolished, a site meeting between the city and the contractor was held. It was determined that due to the unknown location of the inlet pipe to the pump house, as well as other conditions, it would be hard to contain the flowable fill uh, to the pump house and avoid discharge to the pond. Instead, the project change was approved by the city to cover the intake pit, intake pit with a series of five concrete slabs. The five precast interlocking five inch thick slabs were set over the pit. The slabs were created so there was an overlap with the existing <laughs> wall structure of the pit. Two seven foot nine inch by five foot five inch slabs and three seven foot nine inch by seven foot slabs were installed in series using a crane after installation of the five slabs over the intake uh, the four inch slab was poured over the top of the entire structure just as shown in the original plans and the railing was installed i visited the site on july 2nd 2024 to observe the current condition of the structure as shown in the photos below the product is holding up picture of the concrete slab looking to the south and looking to the north Based off of the above mentioned information in my site visit on July 2nd, 2024, it is my opinion that the project is complete and built to the submitted plans and specifications. Except for the above mentioned project change uh, to adapt to the existing site conditions. Please feel free to reach out to me with any additional questions. Diane Rossini, City Engineer. Do you have any pictures you can pull off? Yeah. Yep. I've got a couple of mentioned that she had in her little report, but. Okay. Yeah. Just really just a second here. I can get the most recent pictures that I got was from um, January 25th, 2024. And hold on just a second. Hold on
and just having visited the site on many other occasions, you can say that it was it's stable and it's been stable for some time. Um, I guess one of the questions you had once was that there was some uh, like nylon mesh that was left on the on the roadway that was not removed. Oh, on the just slope? on the little slope the area. Slope there. Mm -hmm. Their access, their access to the air to the work site. Let me see if I might have. Which I don't know if that's a bad thing or not, just because it. Yeah, I think we, I we had stability problems there for a little while. Mm -hmm. I asked if it was biodegradable, and I was told it was not it's because they not. wanted it to stabilize. Right. Mm -hmm. So removing it probably could, you know, remove vegetation and right. stabilize it more. Right. Exactly. Let me see. I feel like I have more recent pictures as well. Didn't make it into that folder. Well, Diane had a couple newer, newer pictures in her uh, report. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can pull that up here in a second. Also. <laughs> Here we go. February. But yeah, hold on. I'll share her pictures and then she's just got the two. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're not seeing it. Yeah. Here we go. Looking south towards the pond and looking back on the concrete slab. And if I, I think I, this picture is, these pictures are better because there's less snow. So this is from February 8th, 2024. And most of the tra traffic on there is from people going down to use the to use it for a, a fishing location or a, a viewing location. No, there's any like equipment getting here. No, no, I didn't see any around any, any time. Any other questions from commissioners or concerns? No. Do we have any other people from the public online that have Questions? Yep. My raise hand function if you do. Yeah. Or a questions. Questions. Go ahead. Do we so did I I'm trying to remember, Cassie. Did we get a request for certificate of compliance for this? Like what do we have? What do we need and what do we have? Um the document, which I think I've already created. I I would have created it um partnering with, with the city engineer. But yeah, we might oh no. I think we have it here, the document itself. Um, it's been received, so I need to go to issue it. Let me just. Do they have to request it? Request it. Kind of like we get one document and then we return the other. Yeah, like even it was, should be documented. Like in the report, it should be you know. Even if it's from the city, the city doesn't care to say it's the <laughs> Well. No, it's fine. It hangs out there forever. Yeah. yeah. So. No, that's what I'm saying. Is there a way we can close it out without them? Or do we have to ask them to ask for it? It's been on the agenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I have it. Yeah. 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 We, I, I think we have asked them. I have it. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's this document. I have the document here. It doesn't, it's a funny document because it doesn't need to be signed by anyone it doesn't need to be anything like that um and so yeah it's i'd have it i just need to turn it into a pdf for you all okay. um but uh and so, then the, yeah so we have a request for yeah we do compliance we've got the engineer statement saying Which what, was the, the, what the deviation yes, was right. from the you know proposed the plan, plan. Yeah. yeah which was a good deviation so, Yep. Created another problem. Yep. Um, that's really the file. That's 
really all we need, you know, I guess. It's like stable. Like stable. Yep. Um, anyone else from the public have any questions or concerns? Do you want to issue a motion tonight to do that? And let's do the paperwork. Yeah, that's how I normally would go. Yeah, okay. right. yeah. But that's fine. I have the, the, I don't have the paper for you all to sign sure. tonight, but I have the voting authorization that I can do okay. it electronically. Are you good to make a motion? Are there any, are there any conditions? I don't think there are any the, conditions in this. So had the site be stable from what I remember. <laughs> There must be some, there's must all be the projects. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our boilerplate is for pretty much all projects that have in perpetuity conditions. I don't, um, I don't remember any maintenance requirement for it. Yeah. This one it was stabilized so slope shall be maintained and as designed and constructed by the property owner of record, whether bioengineering mechanical will be stabilized. Okay. Pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and fertilizers should not be used within hundred feet of the wetlands. Organic pesticides and herbicides and fungicides and fertilizers may be used subject to review and approval by the commission. Dumping is prohibited. No pump dumping is leaves, grass clippings, brush, or other debris in the wetland area or the buffer zone. Uh, additional alteration prohibited. There should be no additional alterations of the area under conservation commission jurisdiction without the required review and permits. Um, that's the only ones that we included for this one. What number of conditions are those? It was 61, 62, 60, 61 through 64. The easier way to say it. Okay. Yep. Sorry, I guess I'll move to issue. I'll move to issue a certificate of compliance for file number 151302 um, for the pump house demolition activities just in the lower mill pond uh, while maintaining. The uh, in perpetuity conditions number 61 and 64 from the order of conditions. Second. Second. Okay. We'll roll call of Commissioner Buttrick. Aye. Commissioner Carr. Aye. Commissioner August. Aye. And Commissioner Weeks. Aye. The motion carries. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh. One, that only took two years. Number H. I suppose we're gonna get the school committee closed out before you may. I thought they're so close. They said they wanted to in spring. And I reached out and I'm like, are you gonna see there these meetings? I'm gonna call them on Monday. Or come on, see if they can come back to me. So I guess we're into enforcement actions unless there's something going out of order. No. Nope. Okay. The updates on 37 South Street. Yeah, I made contact with um, Matt Gall. Okay. The property owner is Julia Gall. And so we, they were going on vacation. So he's like, can we just wait until after I come back from vacation? We can organize them to this. I could, it would be better if I could be there. So it seemed worth it to me. You know, okay. the commission has the authority to just do a site visit. I was like, maybe we can do it. It's, it's not urgent. We're just trying to get about the list. It's been on for so many years. That's yeah. a Excuse me. What area did you say that was? It's South Street. It's the South 47 Street. South Street. It was a, it's a Gall property. Is that by the graveyard? It's it's next to the know. rail trail. Oh, next to the rail trail. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Off of South Street, near the rail trail. Mm -hmm. Sure, they weren't just trying to get in the session. I didn't. I didn't get that feeling. Okay. They, yeah. I think they want to close it out too, or get to where it needs to be. Because yeah, it was the feeling that I got. Yeah. Go ahead. Say again. To be continued. Anything on uh, four seventy six East Street? No. I need to. I think what's what we need to do is just do a site visit again. So that project, they cleared all this vegetation along the stream that and that exit that entered the culvert at the end of their property. And then the commission they did a bunch of plantings. And then I wasn't able to see if the plantings had survived or not. Okay. But based off of aerial imagery recently, it seems unlikely that the woody vegetation survived. And but it is fully vegetated again. 
but there were trees that were removed that haven't been seemingly able to be replaced yet, um, successfully replaced. So I need to do another site visit, okay. and it's just been like not able to do That's it. Right. I will do another site visit um, for the next meeting, but um, it'll be the commission's decision of whether or not uh, this, this enforcement order can be considered closed or not. Okay, well, let's see if we can put that together and we'll make a decision. <laughs> Do we have milestone the deadlines associated with that? I would say that we probably did. Yeah, yeah. Double check. I just don't remember the details on this one. Mm -hmm. They probably did it in by that time, but then the the uh, the plant is all died off then. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um. If we're ready in the next one, sure. uh, no updates for 93 Northampton Street okay. and then Loudville. Um, I talked with one member of PCT, the PCC board, kind of briefly, and they seemed like they were okay with this configuration. Um, I'm kind of just waiting for the app from the project managers to confirm that that is okay for them that they can do that as well. That's a true thing. Do the transfer of finances to the donation. So, yeah, what we would want to do, what we would do is once it's confirmed that it's their minimal to this, I would return them the money that we held in escrow right now, which okay. is three thousand eight hundred dollars. Return it to them, and then the expectation would be for them to provide proof that they made a donation to the Scotland Conservation Trust in the total of five thousand uh -huh. dollars. Kind of, uh, that was the amount that the Scotland Conservation Trust kind of determine that they would need to try to do the kind of a butter kind of analysis and create a like a, a little handout for butters of what's the best way to like, be a good neighbor and a steward to the to the Hannon Brook area that they're near. Um so far they got to that number. And then the question is just like confirming that they've done that. It's, essentially it seems like the commission's pretty was pretty good about the rest of the components of the enforcement order, such as the Cleaning up the sediment at the at the bottom, the plantings that were required, and then the slope restoration and the plantings on the slope seem like they're they're pretty much there. Um, so I'll do another site visit to the slope just to see how the plantings have come along even farther. Um, just because why not? Okay. But yeah, this is kind of the last piece, and the purpose of this last piece is to do mitigation for the sediment that went into the stream and likely has washed away. But at the time was still explicitly pollution. So the management for that is to allow it to wash away. All right. So are you or is it, so who's holding the money that 3800 We are in escrow. The city. Mm -hmm. So the city can't just if they agree, can't just turn over the PCT. It has to go back. You would have to give it back to the contractor when the contractor would give it. Yeah. It's, it's just, the city is not interested in being the ones who make the donation it should be the contractor to make the donation so that money is held in escrow for the services that we have contracted with swca to monitor their sediment removal that was its purpose it wasn't held to right, set up right, for the right. donation so it needs to go back and then they need to confirm that they've they don't need to use that money they can use some other source of money if they right. want to to make the oh. donation um, but it needs to come from that that makes sense yeah and then they get the tax to that Oh, maybe. Okay. So I think they'll be clear that way. Okay. So, <laughs> did you ask the project manager? You said you're kind of waiting on them. Do they yeah. know that they're supposed to be getting back to you? I reached out to them. Um, and I think that I was waiting to try to face again with PTK to be like, you guys are here with them. Yeah, it's more just now I'm waiting on that, but I'll reach out to the panel. Let's do it before the next meeting. An industrial park. Same story. I'm just waiting. I emailed them to let me come do a site visit again, and I heard her back, so okay. I'm going to reach out to them again, and then might just try to just go because it's so quick and i'll just go to the the office during their like business hours and be like can i go take a look it's, right. we don't have an enforcement order issued for this project so we don't have the authority to just go straight out there um because we didn't need to but um it would be good to do it everything.
All right, so uh, are we ready for open space? Yes. All right, open space. Um, the only update I have for Eckerdale West is that uh, our agent got back to me and, and said Chris Powelton is the person, um, Lynn Stewart, that we should try to get in contact with. Okay, I think I tried, but I'll try. I'll just try again. Um, and the number for you is four one three eight six three six three three three. Okay. Or or info at landstewardshipinc.com, which is on the website. Yeah. Did she say that they've been keeping in touch with last one? Well, we we lost our person. Right. Um. So that's where I knew that they were doing a project. Um. At Lathrop and working with that same company, so that's why I was asking. Barbara's kind of in charge of that, so I was asking her who she's talking to because we lost her normal person. Mm -hmm. But I thought we had a sense that like the company just was sort of doing. It wasn't clear from our perspective because we haven't heard from them. But it sounds like because a Jessica Applin person yeah. disappeared on us, so we right. didn't. You know, she was going to another firm, and and she told me who our replacement was, and I reached out to them, and I reached out to like their general line and things like that, but. It sounds like Barbara has had contact from them, right. so which right. is promising. Okay. So I'll try that and we'll go from there. Okay. That's all the updates I have for that for open space. Uh, Ready by Main Street, conservation restriction. No updates. Lights updates, as the street bills. Yeah. So for this project, I said I was going to try to look at the operations and maintenance plan and the stormwater report to see like what's the deal with the basins because this project, similar story, doesn't have it was grant funded. They haven't finished it. Um, there's no more money available to it, but they um, there's concern about the basins not functioning right, correctly. The basins are not functioning correctly, really, right? So. Um, <clears throat> That was what I was going to try to figure out. Is, well, how how were they supposed to function? So, uh, let's see. Well, we think they're holding water when they shouldn't. Yeah, because they probably have silty conditions or something like that. Potentially, and the one. So, the, I was going to look at this. The what the documentation says they're supposed to do, and then the other piece was to reach out to DBW to see if they could potentially do a fix if a okay. fix is needed. Um, and still waiting on them for that. But I have let's see the information from the. Project design on one part here. Okay. The catch basins discharge to designed pipe systems. The project site has three distinct drainage areas. The pre-development and post-development runoff areas and patterns have basically been maintained. Stormwater runoff volume and rate are controlled by using dry detention basins. Um, so that made me think that like, yeah, they are supposed to drain. Right. And then from the um Operation maintenance plan, that was from the stormwater report. And then from the operations and maintenance plan, it says detention basins and outfalls. In accordance with DEP recommendations, the basins will be inspected twice per year. The inspection should be accomplished when the basins are dry and immediately after a significant rain event determined the basins are operating as intended. Twice per year, the basin side slopes and embankments should be mowed and any dash or debris, debris removed. Any sediment that hinders the basins functionally um, should be removed. Inspection should include review of the embankments emerging from the spillway, riprap, outlet, and downstream for any signs of erosion or damage. Repairs should be made immediately based upon inspection report. The accompanying maintenance report should be utilized by the system inspection and the maintenance form and during cleaning. And it's just like a sample report. This is what they're referencing. And okay. so I know that the mowing has been going on. Yes. Um, but yeah, in terms of them from only water, I'm gonna to try to do a site visit over 48 hours after the last rain so I can see if it hasn't which they should be typically drained. Again, this doesn't say specifically how quickly they should drain, but I think that is like the standard. So did they think uh, remind me? Were there any changes to the design or things implemented after the project was completed to try to get them to operate better? I almost feel like I remember something. I didn't think that there were. An amended order was issued for the project, but that was a while ago. And I think that since it's been substantially complete, 
there was the mowing and the maintenance that was done. Um, but otherwise, we could have talked about having them remove some material from the bottom. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, but that's, 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 that's too long ago at this point. So I could put it all together. Yeah. I could mix it up with the basin at the right. school, too. Yes. You know. That did happen. That did happen. That's 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 in the file, there might be something about them going back and trying to remove some of the silts and, and, and get that so it drained better. Mm -hmm. I will. I can double check them the old minutes, but um, minutes. Yeah, minutes. yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. It's like a paragraph, so right. not, I, you know, I'll, I'll kind of try to be reasonable. But uh, the file might be a, a better, mm -hmm. a better look. Yeah. Even though that's going to be the largest thing, but yeah. it's because we're doing them in real time during the meeting. <laughs> okay, and they will be shorter again. Than like a that's right, <laughs> real short. Wow, well, look, towns where you see, like, you know. Minutes were like this project was discussed. <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> All right. <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> uh, and Lake Trip, they're working with Lane Stewart, but not using their own people to do basic plant management. Yeah, the only other one that I have updated for, uh, we've talked about heart trees, we've talked about the pump house. Um, I'm going to try to reach out to the school again to see if they want to come to the COC. They were saying they want to do it this spring, and it's definitely the summertime now. And I got an email from them saying that they're still working on it, but I'm going to try to see if I can get them to come to the next meeting. Uh, and then... It's probably where you want to jump ahead. Yeah. I have a question. Sure. On the one industrial loss, one Berry Street, mm -hmm. It expires 12, 11, 24. Mm -hmm. There was one that they had to like cancel and re request or something. It's that one. That's the one that right down below. It. Two yeah, track two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is track, is track one still being built? Track one, they just haven't come from the CSC. Okay. They came for a partial, yeah. but they haven't finished that building that's along the canal. So they need to do that before okay. they can get the full CSC. Okay. Um, I think we relieved. The storm, we've confirmed that the stormwater system was complete, but that last building. The building wasn't. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then, then track two is the other side of the canal, which they redid. Yeah. Um, and then, so yeah, the next one that I, project that I do have an update for is um, 9395 97 Northampton Street, because we were trying to determine uh, selection of a, of a uh, construction monitor. For the project, so I got so that's cute. that is should be We still only have two people that are yeah. interested at this point. Yep, and the commission had follow-up questions for both. I didn't get I didn't get responses to both. So um, from both of them. It's, you did not. I did. You did. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I didn't get any other. I shared this with the um, managers. They didn't have any other comments. Uh, I can go through the responses if you'd like to hear them. Uh, we can start with Jill and Thomas. All right. So one of the things that the commission asked for was um, if they could reassess the budget for the stream property construction market. The commission expects that process to likely take at least two weeks, and they want to be sure that there can be monitoring for that entire installation process due to the close proximity of the wetlands for that work. They responded certainly. Because they, they had four thousand dollars in it, and we thought that was pretty mm -hmm. low for a two-week observation. Right, right, exactly. It says certainly, or they said certainly, our proposed. Our proposal budget of 4,000 included the level of monitoring that we felt would be appropriate based on our experience providing similar services, including stream cross crossing construction monitoring for other municipalities. We generally do not find that being on site every day slash all day is necessary to appropriately oversee the work. That said, we're happy to do whatever the commission prefers. Based on partial day site visits, each site visit would be approximately $1,000. If they are to be full day, the budget for each visit would be approximately $2,000. 
depending on what the commission decides, the budget range for two weeks of monitoring would be $10,000 to $20,000, assuming some level of presence each day. That was the response for the first piece, the bills and topics. The next question we had was um, if they could reassess the reporting review to include more reports. In order to remain compliant with the order of conditions, the permittee will, be, will need to generate a SWIP report weekly and after every 0.25 inch or greater rain event. As a result, we would expect a minimum of 48 reports per year even if there is no major rain, so probably more than that. Um, her, their response was, I apologize. The reference to 16 reports in section 1.1 is a remnant. Uh, our budget of 5,000 includes review of approximately 60 reports, 52 for each week plus extra for rain events. Was 5,000 the original amount? No, that's the updated. That's increased. Yeah. Oh, wait, let me double check. The 5,000 yeah, for think... 60 reports, though? Let me double check. That's what she said. That's what she it's said. Little, yeah. Little tiny. It takes a minute to ask Caroline. Yeah, maybe. Most of the time, maybe. <clears throat> right, and they just, they could just have a lower rate. Um, so that's the thing, like, as long as they're prepared to do that many reports, that's what we would require them to do. The other thing that also, this is all at the permittee's expense. So they would we need to request, tell us, they, we, they're hired by us, but we, the, the order conditions requires the permittee, the project managers to give us these sums and then we would pay that out. We hold it in escrow and we pay it out to the contract, to the um, monitor who works with us. They contracted with us. Right. And so um, this, what they determine in this budget here is just the initial lump sum okay. in theory to try to cover the whole year. But knowing that there could be well over 60 reports required if we have a, a very wet, wet seasons um, during construction. So, but yeah, 5,000 for the reports does match what the original was, but they intended to say 5,000, assuming that they would do 60 reports. 60 reports. So does that mean your estimated budget goes up to, you know, 47,000? Yes. Something like that? Well, no, because they originally, they would originally had 5,000 budgeted for their reporting. So it only, so far, based off these two points I've read, they did the stream crossing monitoring at 4,000, but if we wanted to increase it, we can increase it to 10,000. Uh, we had a condition that we wanted some of their, all the time during the screen crossing work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's, why they, that's why we were concerned about the 4,000 being too low. Yeah, so yeah, it was just, so 10 to 20,000 for that right. scope mm -hmm. that we're asking for there. So that would be the change from what so, was on the so I'm saying just to the total price scope to, you know, from 37.5 to 47. Or yeah, like yes, yeah, sorry, like that. right. Yeah, that's, yes. all, that's what I'm saying, some, yeah. Yeah, some number in that range. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, exactly. It's okay. increasing because of their willingness to increase the stream crossing monitoring. The stormwater, the swift report not, um, review would, is not the source to increase. Okay. Uh, was yes. Seals and Thomas was there, was there a question about who was doing that monitoring? That that's oh, coming up. Yeah, okay. that's Sorry, coming up. no, no, it's back. okay. No, no, this is it's good because that that was an important one. So yeah. this next one was, can you confirm? Um, you know, the person listed is uh, Stacy Minahan, who does have the correct credentials. But we said, can you confirm that you will be the person on site to monitor the stream crossing installation? The commission wants to be wants that to be monitored directly by someone with a uh, professional wetland scientist qualification or equivalent during the entirety of installation. Also, do the plan for someone else with the correct expertise to fill in should you be unavailable for any of the installation days. And their response was that our plan was for Andrew Foreman to monitor the majority of the stream crossing activities, with me also visiting the site during major construction endeavors associated with the crossing. Although not a PWS, Andrew was our lead wetland specialist and has more relevant construction monitoring including multiple stream crossing experience with his CESSWI and wetlands focus. I understand the commission often, uh, commissions often equate a PWS with wetland field expertise, but as discussed on the phone, which we did discuss this, that's not necessarily the case. The PWS is an international certification that covers academia, research scientists, field delineators, regula regulatory expertise, etc. There are no requirements for certification that would ensure that each PWS has relevant field or construction monitoring experience. We feel that the combination of Andrew and I will best serve the commission in the construction monitoring due to our combined expertise and experience.
I guess I find that appropriately convincing, but I'm not sure how Julie would feel about it. Right. She was, uh, Do we need to make a decision on this one tonight? Um, we don't. Or, or is this something we should have Julie um, take another pass at? We certainly could. Okay. Um, yeah, there's 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 no um, explicit timeline. I'll just note to them that we need to. There, I set a timeline in the in the RFP of okay. when we would do the contracting, but that was contingent on when the commission makes its right. decision. Um, I strongly encourage that the commission make this. I don't know that Julie's going to be here at the next meeting either. Um, so I do want to make a decision before my last at before well, my last. But, but yeah, um, can she weigh in on it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Can, can we give her this this data here and in, in that yeah. person's name and his, his bio is in here? Yeah, and see absolutely. if she's comfortable with that as, yeah. as an option. Okay. Um, let's, I'm just making it up for myself. Awesome. Okay, I can do. It. And then there's one. There's more. So um, okay. this is the last question the commission had for Beals and Thomas. Could you provide more information on 4.1 and 4.2 for the fees and services? The commission wanted to confirm that the budget provided is an estimate, and that the actual services will be billed on time and materials. Their answer is that the budgets are based on the assumption assumptions in the proposal. Services will be billed on a time and materials not to exceed basis based on those assumptions. And she said, I apologize for the remnant reference to the estimated budget in this section. We would advise the commission if services beyond the assumption of the proposal occur so as to update the contract amount if needed. So they would advise, they'd be like, hey, we need close. It looks like we need more. They would reach out. Um, and then they acknowledged, I told them that like the contracting that I timeline that I outlined in the scope in the RFP would be, need to be shifted accordingly. They said understood. So um yeah, so look at their responses. Right. Okay. So that would bring their total estimated budget up to like up another five or ten thousand dollars. Yeah, maybe ten, you know. With um, which is still them on site every day, and they said it'll be two thousand dollars a day. I think that's true. Process is going to take more than yeah. That's uh, ten days. days. Yeah, that's twenty thousand dollars up from four thousand. Right, so that's what they had ten to twenty. They went from four thousand to ten to twenty. So I would assume twenty. Right. Which would be sixteen thousand more than it is now. Fifty thousand five hundred. I'm not sure if someone has to stand there constantly all the time, but it, you know, be there you know, two times a day to see what's happening. Mm -hmm. But they're pretty far away, right? So they're not going to come twice a day. That doesn't, that doesn't <laughs> make sense, stay. right? <laughs> okay. Otherwise, we're going to try to travel more time. Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't sound like we have any more questions potentially for Beals and Thomas, but you're not sure if you're comfortable. You want to hear from the chair about the estimate. Mm -hmm. Did we have questions for the other? Yes, we did. We have, we have, we have, we have questions. So, okay, so that kind of wraps up Fields and Thomas. Yes. And then Weston and Sampson. So, um, let me just actually pull up the questions. I think we had a question about something about a rate table that's oh, yeah. similar to Fields and Thomas. Okay. Was doing. So, the first question was Would it be possible to provide a rate table? The budget table was helpful, but the commission was curious what the cost would be. Uh, per single instance of each task, where applicable, such as estimated costs of one site visit or an extra meeting, et cetera. Um, and then here is their response. And then the other question, because there are two questions, then I'll just read their whole response. The other question is, what is the plan if Greg is unavailable? That was their main person. Doing Street, Street crossing person, yeah. right? Particularly during the, the crossing construction, as that will require multiple back-to-back -back days in the field of continuous monitoring. Is there another person at Weston and Sampson with equivalent wetlands expertise? So here's the response we got back from Weston and Sampson. Weston and Sampson engineers was grateful for the opportunity to submit our June 20th, 2024 proposal to support the East Hampton Conservation Commission as it monitors the construction 
of the mixed use development project at 93, 95, 97 Northampton Street in East Hampton. As you requested via email on June 25th, 2024, I am pleased to provide the below rate table, which provides a more detailed breakdown of Weston and Samson's proposed pricing for site visits conducted as part of our proposed scope. So let me just pose to show that here real quick. Um, So there's the new table. As noted in our June, June 20th proposal, our delivery of the requested uh, construction monitoring services will be overseen by Samuel Moffitt, AICP Senior Principal Planner. The day-to-day -day work of completing the tasks included in the construction monitoring services services project will be performed by Greg Russo, Russo CECWS. If Greg is unavailable to perform site inspection services on a particular day during the project period of performance, uh, Weston and Samson will provide professional services of Rihanna Summers, PWS, UAWB, Another excellent wetland scientist who is a member of our large Massachusetts wetland staff. I have attached Ms. Summers' resume to this letter for your consideration. Please note that Ms. Summers is located in our Reading Mass office and her travel class will include more mileage um, and therefore be slightly higher than that shown for Greg Russo in the table above. We are very grateful for the opportunity to partner with East, East Hampton Conservation Commission on this important project and are confident we bring the relevant experience, background, and range of capabilities to support successful implementation of the project and then they note uh, contract information signed Sam Moffitt. So um, I'll scroll down to um, Ms. Summer's resume here in a second. But so this is that this is the updated table. So the person on site is Sam Russo. His hourly rate is 167 for a full day. It's 1,670. So 10 hour day assumed for bridge oversight. Site visits and meetings are $835. The mileage cost is at $80.40. And then a full day, so a full day total is one thousand seven hundred and fifty and forty cents. Mm -hmm. Partial day nine hundred and fifteen. Yeah. So, um, and then this is the um, center. So she does have a PWS. Another scientist here. She's been there about a year, I would say, essentially. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Rihanna Summers. I guess I still don't know. Thomas is saying that their $5,000 was for 60 reports. And Western and Samson's charging 33,500 for the same number of reports. That's a pretty huge. They put 210 hours for flexibility and monitoring for a swift site. Which is a lot more than 60. Yeah. But I don't know, so if, why it, do I don't know if that's it's, more than what they, you know. Why do they think it's going to take 210 hours versus 60? And that, maybe they're anticipating more reports. We specified how many reports we wanted in the. All we said was, all we said that there would be at least one report every week, but then also after every 0 0.25 inch rain event or greater. So they could have said, we are already assuming there's going to be way more rain events. So we didn't specify you need to give us a total yeah. for this many reports, just at least for the weekly at a minimum. So they went a little above, they went above beyond after that. So if there are less rain events, will they charge less money? So the way it's worked out with other or that, is it if it's less than 210 hours, I mean, will they charge less? They will. So what they what they're proposing for their budget is how much we're going to require the applicant, the permittee, to give us before we can, we can let them to get hold. started yep. to hold. And I will get invoices from this contractor from from either Weston, Samson, or Beals and Thomas, and pay them out of that money that's held in escrow. 
And so it's really hard to, to predict genuinely how much money mm -hmm. will be needed over the year. It's an estimated sure. budget, but um, they need to notify us if it's getting close. Like uh, if the I agent and the commission would kind of keep track of it and be like, all right, we're getting close to the end of this budget. Like, do we need to request more and set up a new contract? Just saying, yep, we're re-upping for another go of this. We need more reports. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, here's the amount that the permittee has to give us and we'll carry on. Um, and that's what I would expect because the project is likely to take many years. This okay. is only for the first year. So we certainly will have to recontract again in your way. Um, so. Does it have Julie? Oh, yeah, that's that's yeah. my feeling is to have Julie have a shot at it, even if it doesn't have to wait till the next meeting. If if we can just reach out to her and just say, hey, here's the, here's the updates they gave us, and uh, yep, because so we're not voting on our opinion tonight. I, but... I prefer that yeah. we could help, but just yeah. just because this is Julie's area. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. So there's the there's the one qualification thing. I, I guess that they're both like equally qualified, more or less. Um, yeah, I don't have any real concerns um, yeah. that someone can't do it or they don't have the right people. Yeah. Um, my my like big picture, you know, like the model I have in my head of the difference between the two proposals is that like. Weston Sampson has to get up to speed on the project, whereas Beals and Thomas is already sure. like up to speed on the project, right? So that adds so that adds that, cost to these guys. Right. Who knows where that number goes? They don't have right. an item for right. that, but yeah. that is a cost to Weston and Sampson that yeah. you know that Beals and Thomas won't have to the same mm -hmm. uh, extent. So yeah, you know. But yeah, we can we should see what Julie says about the qualification. Um I didn't want that with the person that they're proposing to use. No. Um, do we feel that we need to have a, a, a motion to pick someone when it comes to it, or is this something that'd be better to select yeah, okay. so like twenty four? It probably is. Yeah, and so um, we'll like send it to Julie directly and try to get an answer. Sure. Um, and then and then notify these folks that like it's not like we don't have any questions. There's no new questions. I don't believe so. Unless Julie has a question about yeah. something that came back. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess we could ask Weston and Samson if they built time off the hours to get up to speed. Yes. Yeah, um, I guess the one, like you said, it's Julie's area of expertise. The only thought I had was that it seems to make more sense to me to overestimate and have more money held out if they can, and then if they don't need it, they get it back, then to have to go back later and ask them for more money and increase it. So, oh, you know, there's a the blind quote, so you don't know what the other person's quoting either. You know, you just kind of. Right. I don't know how to account for the difference between the number of hours. Right. Right. And they're not, we're making guesses. Right. That's correct. Lie. Yes. Right. That's so, why it's hard. So, unless they can tell us, <laughs> or at least unless Western Samson can tell us, because Beals and Thomas did tell us what they were. Well, so do you think, okay, so you're saying you want more itemized beyond this? This is, no, I'm just saying for the 210 hours that represents that 32,500, yeah. is that just based on like their assumption that there'll be one extra quarter in train event a week? Or is that based on hours to get up to speed on the project? That's so way more hours than Bales and Thomas mm -hmm. put aside for that. Okay. Yeah, I can ask them how many reports is that do I enter now just to shake out to be how right. many reports or is does it include other getting familiar with mm -hmm. their But maybe get the data we have in front of Julie first, yeah. at least at the same time. So yeah, yeah. if they take you know nine days, ten days to get back to us, we're not short, yeah. you know, short terming Julie's time to 
take a look at the JVD and that Yeah, and I'll just say that, like, the commission, there's, a, there's not a rush to make a decision, only in that it would be easier for me if we can buy you next sure. year. Yes. Or, like, we'll figure it out, like, either way. Just not saying, don't, I don't want you to feel like you have to rush to make a decision next meeting. Like, you need the right decision, but yeah, that's kind of just what we're working with, so. We can make it work. Yeah, we've got ninety percent of the questions answered that we asked. So, yeah, I just want to have uh, any person take a look at it. That's fair. Okay. Um, and then the only other project I have a quick update for. Is the Allen Street Health East Central Housing Authority project? And should we are, I think. Yep. Um, just that they contacted me today and they're hopefully trying to maybe get started this summer, potentially before I leave to the pre construction requirements. So okay. this just on the radar that they're hoping to get started soon. Um, exactly. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one sounds like very complicated. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, now. For now. What could go wrong? Yeah. What could... Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if, if there's no other um, ones that you want to ask about, those are the things I expected updates for. Was there, was there did something pop up going back to the almost the beginning of um, the natural water bond vegetation management? Oh, was yeah, yes, sorry. Yeah. 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 Site visit, uh, we have a site visit tomorrow, for, tomorrow okay. for, the, for the project because um, they're going to do their next yearly treatment. I got the data that's required to be submitted beforehand, and we'll be doing the site visit is meeting with the folks who are doing the application, but then also checking to make sure that the proper signage is up and the file number and the information about what they're what herbicides they're going to be using and when and, and um the safety information associated with that. So uh I preliminarily got the picture that I've seen it up there like but I will confirm that it's all out there at the site visit tomorrow. The weird thing about the site visit is that I scheduled it for noon, but they won't the um Gary goes, he won't know when they're coming until like they're 20 minutes beforehand. Okay. I will like update the the what? invite, but it, in theory, it'll be sometime around noon. Okay. But it's like not exactly known where it'll be. But I will certainly be able to go myself and get pictures and I'll update the invite. Right. So if anyone wants to make it, just send an email out. I will. I'll yeah. See what happens. Okay. Yeah. General business. Minutes. Um, the both sets of minutes I got comments back from and from Commissioner or Commissioner Commissioner Carr. Um, I haven't in incorporated yours yet there because I just didn't have time to do it before the yeah. meeting, but it sounded like they were minor. Yeah. Okay. So I could I will incorporate those two. Just make yeah. the next meeting to approve them. Oh, uh, uh, if you guys want to, but yeah, just, what changes approved? I don't them. know what you're trying to do. Minor. Yeah, I'm managing Gra grammar for corrections. All good stuff. Well, to check them for accuracy in terms of what happened at the meeting, and yes. then also for I know, I know. <laughs> but no, it's, most of it was pretty minor. I, I yeah. thought all of it was. So, um, just just need errors um, in grammar and things like there. But uh, and then I'll incorporate uh, uh, Sarah's as well. But if if you guys are comfortable with it, you could motion to approve the minutes with changes um, as described, and then. Is there that motion? I'm comfortable with that. I move that we accept the minutes with um, the, the changes recommended by Commissioner August and Carr. So this is the minutes of June tenth, or mission or both uh, both minutes. Can you... uh, I was I was being inclusive. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you. Second. Um, roll call: uh, Commissioner Buttrick. Hi. Commissioner Carr. Hi. Commissioner August. Hi. And Commissioner Weeks. Hi. Motion to carry. Okay. Next one is the most important one. Yeah, it's time for your agent update. So I have a couple things to give y'all. And um but the first thing is so there's kind of two fronts essentially or three things. 
one is me trying to accomplish the tasks I've listed down here um, for my goals. We're getting there for some of them. We're not going to be able to do them all, unfortunately. Hopefully, at least for some stuff, we can finish the RFP, the monitoring, third party monitoring setup piece. I think that. They won't be ready to do the on-site pre-construction conditions until August, right after I'm gone. But in theory, we will have to set up a third of this person help us. Sure. They will be there, That's right. sure. um, and we may have an agent by then. So um, both those things, hopefully, they're they're in good shape. And then um, trying to close out some enforcement orders, like mm -hmm. that 6973 Ladville Road, we're really close. It feels like um, Northampton Street. No, I still need some more time. Um, but it will be part of you know the first right. phase of construction for that one and then those other smaller ones i'm going to grab yeah we're probably phase. at the point where we're going to pick priorities of things yeah. that are more important than other <laughs> things have been hanging around for five years maybe right. don't matter as much as things that are like uh, going to hit us yeah. real fast yep hmm. um still working on pleasant street mill coc close out we did the pump house tonight yep. we can cross that one off current projects a lot of these are listed Park Street Solar. It's close. The school it's close. Maybe at the next meeting, if you've learned solar, they got an extension. Cherry Street Project also got an extension. Um, we're working on the draft wetlands ordinance. We do have a full draft now. So now we're trying to find it down. But that one I would say is checked off. Um, and then double checking the files and digitizing stuff is something I'll just keep working through as much as I can do. Obviously, all the files will be up to date. The time it leaves that will certainly happen digitizing i'll go back as far as i can go um in the time that i have so that's kind of an update on the goals the other piece mm -hmm. is um search for a new conservation agent in the um industry plan should we not find one but i will say that the search for a new conservation agent we had a lot of people apply so some people are here there's some folks who are oh, here actually goodness. this person left but there was another person who was here who was also interested in, in applying and um eva is interested in applying which is nice oh, you could oh, that oh, um <laughs> well we scared this one away we haven't nope. scared you away <laughs> not that easily scared yeah okay. yeah <laughs> but so um in addition to uh, your application you also received like six others it's okay. been very popular i know i was shocked too i was like wow this is awesome i'm mean, not shocked you guys are awesome well, i'm glad it's yeah. it's public in this <laughs> yes right? it's public work so we're in good shape but there was some competition but still all mm -hmm. all good things so um we're trying to reach out and try to schedule when we're going to do the interviews. Um, we're hoping some point next week, maybe going into the week after that. Um, and yeah, an interview. Yeah. Well, uh, we're kind of trying to refine down maybe some of the applications might not be worth interviewing, if that makes sense. All respect to them. It's just that we would narrow it down to whatever be, between me and HR, what seems like, you know, if they don't have any experience at all, then it's like, we have many candidates who have good experience okay. so like we do it even not just having been nations for just generally like having done things and being knowledgeable about the education act um kind of looking at it through that lens okay. but uh so the next step is to figure out who can if anyone is willing and able to go to the interviews i'm going to be able to go um but then also we were hoping to get someone from the conservation commission to go and um i was going to try to reach out to the cpa committee to see if anyone would go i know you're on both right um but julie was kind of interested in, in um very involved, interested very interested so that would be the primary i totally agree with the benefits yeah. available I spoke yeah, with her the last, problem, yeah. yeah i spoke with her kind of recently when we did our last ordinance um, working group and she seemed like she probably wouldn't be available okay. but i'm still going to reach out to her what's that what are they doing the, hopefully we would do them next week monday and tuesday so i know it's like not a huge like advanced time, but um, like in the afternoon, and it would be like a two hour block, and we would just split them and do 20 minutes per person. Mm -hmm. Um, we could split it up if we have to, we could do some on like a Thursday morning and things like that, but we need to work around Emily's schedule because she definitely needs to be there. Um, and so, and then we were hoping only to have like not more than four people in the interview because yeah. it's crazy. No, so, that, right? Yeah, um, but so it was a question of like. Well, for the CPA, like Jay, would you want to do be the person for the CPA? Yeah, you think the chair was trying to do it, or Jay not have time, or someone else? Um, I, I don't like being involved with it for the CPA, but it, but again, Jamie had everything you know, yeah. under control, you know. So it's like uh, we always look to her for uh, solving all the answers and keeping us on the 
straight and narrow. So um, we knew it would have to be dangerous, but she had uh, she had just the, like us. <laughs> <laughs> she had the knowledge. So yeah, hell yeah, I know it's big shoes to fill. But I guess I just didn't want to step on their toes and say like, oh, we'll just have you do it. Right. But if you think that they probably would be comfortable with you doing well, it, then the, the new chair we can ask the new chair. Okay. And, um, but you know, we we're having enough fun trying to get the computer to work last meeting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so okay. Well, and then if Julie can't do it, is there a second person who'd want to do that? Go to the interviews, or would you even be able to? But um, if Julie can't be in person, can she at least see the resumes and, and get a, a, a shot at that to yeah. say, hey, you know, this is good. This is maybe not so good. And, yeah. and that's the other piece. Yeah. So, um, and you can see the resumes. But you have to come down and see them at the that's office, fine. like because she can't, she doesn't feel comfortable emailing them yeah, or sharing them. Agree, agree with that. Yep. But you can come down to see how, or potentially we could even do like a video call and I could show them to that point. Right. Do you that way right. if you want to? I know it seems that's a little silly, but funny. Yeah. I mean, they already sent them digitally. It's true. Yeah. But that's it's several. So I'm just um, working with them. But it seems important given how closely. They, like you have worked with Julie at times that they get to meet. Yeah. Because you can't really tell personality. No, I, I agree with you. How well people are going to get along based on resumes. So. I know. I totally agree with you. The, the limiting factor is that my hope is, and again, we don't need to meet this deadline. My hope would be to get someone hired before I leave. So maybe we can do like a yeah, training day. Yeah, I was just saying, if you but, yeah. narrow the six down to two, mm -hmm. then maybe Julie gets to have a 10 minute phone call. That's correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Makes, that yeah. makes more sense. Agreed. Legit. That makes sense. So um, let me see here. Real chatty and tend to drag things out for hours when it comes to stuff like that. Uh, I tend to be really good. I've interviewed and hired a lot of people in my life, but I'm not probably not available in those times. I see. Yeah. So, the, in terms of like what the structure would be, and uh, it's just so you don't give anyone an unfair advantage, you're not going to read them off. But I, get, I have the questions here. They're all stuff that you would expect to be the questions, nothing like super Maybe serious or crazy. Unfair. What do you say? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but here are the questions. So if you guys want to like just look at them and maybe just like if you can like shoot me an email like tomorrow or something that like are these like you're like that's crazy or is something missing. We didn't want to have too many more questions that are on here, so maybe you could like swap one out for something else. Okay. Yeah. So there's been like way too long. Um and again, we're hoping them to be like 20 minute long sessions here. Um I wanted to give those to you and then I think they're gonna answer all these questions in 20 minutes. No. <laughs> yeah. They can refine it down to I think she she was saying she wanted there to be 10. I uh, said the same there 15. I was like, oh my god. I got nothing crazy. They're all like things that you would expect. Um I don't have any notes to this, honestly. I think that it was pretty comprehensive um and didn't have anything. But I think I wanted to give you guys at least a chance to say, like, okay, yeah, no, change this. I don't we don't have to get into it now because you're just seeing it right now. But if two folks want to try to like email me at right. the end of the day tomorrow, maybe that would be awesome. Okay. I also could step out if that was. Oh, yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Really not. It's on YouTube, anyways. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, cool. And then, okay, so then the next piece, that's like for the interview piece. So just generally, though, the takeaway is like it's looking really good and we're going to have something. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and it won't have to go with our contingency plan. But let's review it anyways if you all are willing. So um, unless you have any other questions about the interview. I would mean, mix numbers three and eight. Three and eight. Because I think you need to tell them that. Well, no, I think that, that is true, but um, sometimes it's nice to know where they're coming from. Right. What you think. Sure. I get what you're saying. Yeah. I know. I'll, I've no bet out here. Just. Okay. So, any other questions for that? Okay. No. And it sounds like, Jay, you're probably able to at least go to the interview maybe. Yes, yes. If it doesn't sound like any other commissioners can go. Um, what? Yeah. yeah. 
Monday and Tuesday afternoon. I think I'm during business hours. Yeah. Yeah. I can I can chat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if anything changes, just email me maybe by the end of the day, um, tomorrow. But um then maybe I can reach out to the the chair at CPA and be like, Do you want to come? And then you can be con con and he's um available because um, school's ended, so oh, okay. he should be available. Oh, cool, cool. I don't know, I don't know if he's on vacation or not, but yeah. <laughs> See him. Okay. Um, all right, cool. Then the next piece is like, okay, assuming we don't have an agent for some reason, um, what were we going to do? So what I had told the commission I was going to do is create a list of what like the minimum requirements are just to like stay in compliance with the Protection Act and the open meeting law. And so you guys can kind of ruminate on these and see if there's anything that you would want be interested in trying to like take on for the interim um but i wanted to make a note to say that like you are all volunteers you don't have to have a reason for why you can or can't do a thing if you're like if you're like i can't do any of these that's very valid and you don't have to say why you can have a personal reason you can have a medical reason you can have like uh just a comfort level reason or work an availability reason like it's all valid so i just want to put that out there and then we would do the city will have to do what they can to make it happen. Mm -hmm. If it turns out that like we don't have an agent for a lead and we're coming up on the next meeting, we could also like cancel a meeting and be like, we're just still not there yet. We don't have, we can't do the meeting. That's also an option just to get this a little more. Do you all want to do that? Um, but I'll go through what these are, but I'll give them to you guys now. And so I don't know if it's the first page is like the minimum, the back pages are like what I've had looking for the agent to do otherwise. Um, and like it was some things that like were either I can't remember what the highway convention was. I think yellow was like yellow was mandatory and green was hopeful and blue was like super hopeful. I can't remember. Um but the first page is really the only part that's mainly relevant, frankly. So um oh, and I think that list has been updated since then. So I honestly would just see more unless you're interested. But uh, so the first one is meetings, kind of separate meetings, permits, and contact with people. And the meeting piece is more like organizational and trying to get these templates ready, creating agendas and submitting the clerk by Thursday before the meeting, writing the minutes for each meeting and submitting them to the clerk's office. I should have on here reviewing the minutes as its own item as well. Um, coordination of IT to confirm the room is prepared for the Google Meet, doing a hybrid. Um, Getting to the meeting a little early so that you can make sure the chairs are in place and things are kind of set up and we printed out the sign in sheet in the agendas, which having extra agendas in a sign on sheet is not required. If you're like, I can't use the printer, we just we just don't have it. Sorry, it's available online. People can get it before the meeting if it's submitted. Then for permits, it's kind of gathering the materials for each permit application, um, writing the permits themselves, and then sending them out to everybody. This is the hardest piece, honestly, in my opinion. Um, review they're just this whole section of permits, reviewing building permit applications and then issuing them, and which is a simple simple enough, but it is like involved in, in weirdly sporadic, and then checking site visits. So for new permit applications and for existing um, construction projects, and then the last one's a like contact point. Someone to check the physical mail and the email. Someone to issue emergency certifications and like be the person that the DPW contact if that happened. Communicate with active project managers and applicants. And most people, this is the note that like if people want to communicate with the commission, what I plan to do if we didn't have an agent would be to set my away message saying like if you want to talk to the commission, you need to go to the meeting. Like this email is not being monitored consistently. Like you need to come if you have a complaint or an update. Which, which email? Because your email email is going to go away. And then we have a general conservation at each campus. So it would be both. They'll leave my email for a while because if I just, they did this for the planning department, uh, excuse me, the oh, or planner or whatever. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah, the assistant planner, they did, um, they just changed the owner of the email to a new person. So my email probably will still exist. The new person to like be able to search through and see all the old mm -hmm. emails yeah. just will that makes mm -hmm. sense. be their name. For the last yeah. for the last CPA meeting, I went to one of Jamie's old emails and clicked on the link that sends me to the drive. The, the, the drive and none of that was there. Yeah. You couldn't see any of it. So, so that's a good point. So they couldn't uh, I couldn't look up one of the uh 
things we were supposed to be talking about that night because all the data was gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Release the sharing permissions. Well, yeah, the sharing yep. permissions, that's all. I mean, so, okay, if your email goes away, but it was uh, because Jamie's email went away, uh, the shared drive went away also. Interesting. Okay. So I couldn't uh, I couldn't see the what was in front of us to vote on. Yeah. Yeah, the okay. shared drive makes me extremely nervous. Yeah. yeah. And like somebody that doesn't deal with public record stuff, I feel like that's a public record that's not out in the city's control, really. Mm -hmm. You know, but I don't know if that's what the city wants us to do, you know, or if that's just what you're doing. You know? So I'll figure this out with IT, but basically the way it's set up right now is that the files aren't tied to my name. I have access to a shared drive that's the planning department. So like if my email were to go away, you would not lose those files because they're in the bigger SIP planning department shared drive, if that makes sense. Well, the but drive wouldn't go away. No. Access but my access it. to yes. the drive went away. So Somehow. that's the thing where it is right now is y'all have permissions. The ones that I send you to, it's you, your permission is viewers. That's how I like kind of keep them secure. Like you guys can't delete anything or edit anything in there. You can just see them and read them and print them. But I think when you go away, that yeah. link goes away. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know how it all works, but I will figure it out that's, because that's how it yeah. Works with Jamie. yeah. And so and ideally what will happen is that the new agent would just assume my email, if that makes sense. Right. And then they would retain all those permissions and it nothing would need to happen. But it is a question of like, yeah, what would it be um mm -hmm. if that doesn't happen? So I will figure that out. Should I ask IT? Okay. But, but so the files on the drive, they're like for our convenience and communication, oh, yeah. yep. right? The, yeah. the actual city record copies of things go in here. And Correct. So everybody's submitting a hard copy permit application when they submit a permit application. And then like the permits get recorded, the registry deeds and the minutes and everything yeah. are the city clerk and the vault or yeah. I was guessing. Are those electronic or are those hard it's copy? Both. It's so, both. and I do that for our records. The clerk probably does it too. But for our records, what I do is every single document that's relevant to a project is has a physical file mm -hmm. and a digital file, and they should match. And then the digital file, yeah, it's just for convenience. But the physical file needs to be retained. There's some kind of record retention law, yeah. but we retain them forever because yeah. why not? Um, if we started running out of space, I guess we could bump off some old ones. But um, straight down we have enough space for all everything out so um those will all match and then um I can't the last thing I was gonna say this is the same is true for the minutes like I have our own saving of the minutes and all the signage sheets and the agendas and in physical form. Right. So yeah. What's helpful in the files is that there's basically templates of everything and you can see in the digital file like the draft version of the thing so that you can recreate it and use it as a template for something else or there's there's like so much more in there, everything else right now. And then yeah, the requirements for applications when they're submitted is one digital copy and one physical copy. Um, and then we can have for more if we need them, like everyone else wants a copy. But try to have at least one for the file. And all the rolled plans that used to be up there, are those in those flat files mm -hmm. now? Yep. Okay. And then like and did, I just noticed that happened. Yeah, yeah so that was a whole project that took a whole road. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think the ones that are up there still are condom but plans. I think those were like left over like planning, maybe. The ones on top yeah, yes. that are still up there. So, so they're not concom. Pretty sure they're not. I'll double check before we leave. Yeah. No, the files will certainly be all be in order and pristine before I leave. Yeah. Uh, pretty good. And you know, keeping up with I've been keeping up with them as we go, obviously. Yeah, so I don't know. Think about these these tasks. Maybe email me if you think you can do any of them. Um, and we can go from there. But yeah, maybe it's much less likely of something of a need that we will have. Just based off of how the, the, uh, the position hunt has been going. Uh, you know, if they had questions about what's listed on there, what they entail, or. Um, how how would we, maybe other people on the commission? Yeah. How would we know whether to issue an emergency certification? Yeah, so I also have a guide for every single action the commission could do, which is a little cuckoo, but I did it when I left Bernardson. So I'll make all those available. So if like you sign up for one of these tasks, or if you're interested in one of these tasks, just let me know. I'll send you the, the guide document. You can learn a little more about what is entailed. But um, for emergency certification, usually it's DPW has to confirm or the public or public health. The health department has to get for some official person in the city 
has to deem it to be a public a threat to public health and safety or whatever is happening state agency or a state agency yeah. someone official has to come and say this is a threat to public health and safety if you get that then you just issue the enforcement order and there's like a, a, sh a form and then at the next meeting it comes up and you didn't say this is what happened i issued it because this this is a recommendation here's the ratification could the commission ratify it and vote to be like yeah it was okay but at that time you can also be like i think you should ask them to do that more or whatever um but yeah it needs to be a threat sometimes people want emergency certification because it's very fast mm -hmm. they feel like it's emergency mm -hmm. but it's not at all that's right um, make it look easy. out for that i would love to tell people they're stupid I was just going to say the same thing. I would love to tell them no. Hey, what do you think? No. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Right. It's a safe and safety. You know, you know, public safety. Public, public health and safety. Yeah. <laughs> if you have time to apply for a permit. Because, and two, they need to be able to do it in 21 days, whatever the right. work. And only the work that is enough to stop the emergency. They can't like like it's an emergency. This dam is going to break. I need to build a house. And so wait, <laughs> you can stop, fix the dam, but you can't build the house. Like no, <laughs> you're know, Yeah. So I actually did one way out a couple of months ago. Oh really? Something. Yeah. Oh, Somebody went out and was like, "Uh, oh, this wall and this dam failed." And we're like, "Oh, that word." Okay. Words, words, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions about con 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 no, no. updates? So just what is the back again? Uh, so I was trying to figure out like what are the goals and things that a conservation agent does or that I currently do. And yeah. it was mixed up with the same really coordinator stuff. And I just used this document and like pulled out from it the things that I'm like, these are the bare minimum of what you need to do. Most of it's that top paragraph there, that top bullet that's highlighted yellow. And some of it was like, I can't remember what I highlighted to other things for. But it is, this is the bare minimum. Let's say, you know, worst case scenario, you go and hire someone and we divvy up these three sections among us. What happens to all the other bare case minimum things? No, those aren't the bare minimum things. Oh, okay. those were like all the things that I did. Oh, okay. And That's I was highlighting them based off of different things. Like some of the ones, like the support staff to the Agricultural Commission. I was like, I don't do that. But it would be pretty cool maybe if someday someone did. Or um, the Bees Committee. I do do the Bees Committee now, but like, what does it make sense to stay with the agent? Right. Or maybe that could be a sustainability coordinator. In the yeah. short term, that may not be yeah. as important as yeah. so many other things. Yeah. Well, and certainly for the conservation commission, right. the front page is what is the bare minimum. Well, especially if it's not going to be the same number of hours, too, right? Right. right. Mm -hmm. um, but no, the conservation agent position that was posted in the filling is much broader than that. It's doing open space management, it's doing all this other good stuff in the CPA and, and things like that. But the front page of this document is just if you guys were going to go it alone, that is the bare minimum that needs to happen. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, if there's no other questions about that, the uh, wetlands ordinance. And I don't know. Do you think it's true to say it's like we have a draft, but now I'm going to try to add in some more things before I go and get it to you guys? And then maybe get some last comments from you guys by email. But we're not going to meet again, right? Me. Um, until we, so I think you have the next meeting was set for August something. I didn't even put it in my calendar. Agreed. Did, did we make? I mean, let me go check. I thought that we had. So, what know. is the next? Like, once you guys get your draft and your comments, and, the, and then it goes to us, and then we make our comments. Yeah. So, and then after we all agree on it then it gets promulgated to the rest of the city department or how does what's promulgated is when it gets like approved and it becomes the law of the city. Okay. so that's like the last piece but there's kind of like it's up to the commission how they want to pursue i recommend the more you public shop it out and public right. input then you yeah. can start to preempt that's what right. the concerns for and against yeah. it how you can like kind of we get here and there to be the most successful when it goes to city council mm -hmm. um but in theory the, the, the formal process is we finish a draft the commission reviews it 
approves that final draft. Then the commission chooses to shop it out how they like. I would recommend shopping out to each board and committee. Um, that seems relevant. And then maybe holding a public meeting related to it so people can come and make public comments. Then you need to choose um, a city councilor to kind of champion it, which I think there's a few that would be interested. Certainly, Owen Zaret approached yeah. me very early days saying he's really interested yeah. in this. Um, and then Connie Gannon probably would be interested as well. But they would then help you take it to a uh, a subcommittee of the city council, the ordinance subcommittee. They those like three commission uh, councilors would review it and vote whether or not they want it to go to the full city council. So they could kick it back down. You got to revise it, come back, or they could say, "Yep, this is good." Then it goes to full city council, and the public has another opportunity to be like, "We don't like this. We like it. Change it this way." Um, yeah. So it it's, it's involved. Well, in theory, I would say if you I know, but it could be after four years. Comparatively, I feel like we're at a really good stage. Like, this is the first time I think there's been like a full final draft because there was a really good draft in 2018, but I don't think it was like 100 percent done at any point. So this one, it really is now just refining it down, bringing it back to the whole group, and it's up to you guys how long that process it takes. I suppose. It's in yeah. sort of a procedural question. In shopping it around, I mean, it certainly makes sense, you know, in terms of other commissions within the city, you know, purview. But, you know, some of that is going out to the members of the public that we have worked with. Obviously, Kestrel and Piscomic mm -hmm. come to immediate mind. Mm -hmm. But are we at liberty to, forgive my phrasing, pick and choose who we shop it out to? Or does that get us into violations of how we go about things uh, that's an interesting question yeah, i think know. that the the best thing to do would be to hold a public hearing and advertise it and be like this is when anyone could come and then you could reach out to people and be like i think you should come to this um right. but then also obviously we advertise for the entire public and we could presumably hand out copies yeah. or make yeah. make copies available yeah. 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 yeah exactly that's why like it's electronically so we're not burning yeah. up the xerox machine yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Focus on like the Hong Kong website and right. uh, page and and uh, kind of make it available there. Um, and yeah, then people can come and, and give their comments. And mm -hmm. you could also like nominate a delegate from the commission to go to other boards and committees and be like, this is the, this is, this is what we're proposing. Do you need comments? You need to physically go to their meetings or you can just email it to all the chairs and all the department heads and be like, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. you've seen it. If you have comments, email back. You know, kind of like the intensity of that is up to you guys. Um, but I think like in terms of the legal requirement, it's like it just needs to go to the subcommittee meeting and then the city council. You just increase your chances of success if you kind of can get an idea sure. of what people are going to take issue with and can refine it against that. Either change it so that people don't take an issue, make a compromise or craft an argument for like, no, this needs to stay this way and this is why. Okay. So yeah, it's involved, but it's it's not impossible. And like having the draft is like a huge piece. So but yeah, that is all today. August is the next working group session. By which time you will be in any other country. Actually, I'm not gonna leave until like September. But don't tell us that. <laughs> you may regret it. Well, it's interesting. It's good to know because. I want to make myself like available to the new agent. And even if I'm not able to do a training at all with them at all, I will be like, you can call me on the phone or you can like reach out. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, at least we have a period of time, but subject to my availability. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Well, thank you for getting us together. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. No problem. So we're not going to advocate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're gonna do. So they usually do one here in the office, but we're gonna try to do some kind of like going away something right. last day on August first. Anyone wants to go? Right. Any more details? Of <laughs> so we'll be going down the Palestine or wherever else. Okay. Really? That's cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, oh. And a in a dory and a raft and a kayak and a you know. Well, it's bigger than a dory, but it's motorized. Uh, okay. It's a raft. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to have 15 people on it. So it's going to be big enough. Nice. It's it's people on it. It's it's just. <laughs> I want you to be on the report. Is that it? That's all I got. That's enough. Okay,
Uh, motion to adjourn. Uh, <laughs> second. All in favor, uh, Commissioner Buttrick. Aye. Commissioner Carr. Aye. Commissioner August. Commissioner Weeks. Aye. Motion carries. Next meeting is scheduled for July 22nd. Sunday. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.